Hey guys, let's get back into Infinity. This time I'm playing against my regular Pano opponent. Well, one of them. I've got two regular Pano opponents. And we're playing um, a customized mission. I'm finally getting around to testing one. Um, before I talk about it, this is my new Shinobi Kutsune. And um, as you can see, I've, I'm using these little bits of acrylic on the bases, these little cubes which I've glued together, uh, just to flow the, flow, follow with the dynamic of the um, the model. Hope you guys like it. So just in the process of painting her up, but um, if you're wondering what these little blue cubes are, they are basically um, when I bought the Bandua Games uh, consoles, they come in these little sprues, and when you click them out, these little boxes fall out, these little um, uh, waste bits, uh, which I collected and just used them creatively on the space. So I hope you guys like that. Uh, and the next photo will actually show me trying to deploy Shinobu Kutsune with uh, superior infiltration but failing my very first attempt, uh, career attempt at that and deploying on the table edge. But let's go to the next photo and have a look at the overview of the table. Playing, uh, well, play testing a custom mission very similar to the ITSCs, the antennas, except the three consoles, the three uh, objectives are through the center of the table, the equator, rather than one on either side of the deployment zones. Uh, and one in the middle. Um, a little bit similar to Incursion and War Machine and Hordes. Now, um, we're placing, play testing some ideas here. Uh, importantly, at the end of the game, you add up the number of army points you have remaining, and then you subtract the number of army points that your opponent has if they had less. So let's, su let's suppose I survive with 200 points, and you survive with 100 points. There's a differential of 100 points. You score 0, I score 100. Um, if I'm the one with 200 points and you're with 100 points, so I've got 100 points there at the end of the game. Then you get 75 points for every objective that you are in control of at the end of the game. Plus, I think we agreed on 50 points for securing the HVT. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually going to eventually get around to putting up a Google document that anybody watching my videos can look at and suggest uh, changes for custom missions, but would like to get away from strict ITS because we could believe that it could be better managed. Now, importantly, um, the rule goes that we're playtesting here is that if you are not a specialist, you can still attempt to pass a willpower check to take a, an objective, but you're at negative three. So, specialist, just the same as ITS. Non-specialist, you can still actually attempt to score as if you're a specialist, but you're a negative three willpower mod. Just to make it so that even if all your specialists die, you still have a um, in a reduced attempt uh, chance of, of still winning. Uh, it also shores up the difference, I believe, between factions like uh, Ariadna Sectorials and maybe Toha lots of you know efficient orders with um, with Ford observers to get out there um, and other people who would rather play with say 10 or less maybe tags giving them a chance to actually win on scenario without having to you know just rely on one or two specialists which have a lot of maneuverability my uh, new lot of Yujing have showed up so I'm actually playing with Sunse and uh, a couple of extra little goodies uh, floating around We'll go to the next image where my opponent is set up using a couple of um, my uh, lended, loaned Panoshana models. He's got a uh, Aquila with HMG as usual and a few Fusiliers hanging up back. This is a uh, not a sectorial army, I might add. Next photo, uh, I've got the first turn here. We've got my brand new, finally got the right model, Guilang Ford Observer, and moving to the uh, the console just as you would in an ITS mission. Of course, he's a specialist, so just passing the willpower check and taking control of it. And as you can see, what I mean, this um, this console here is from Bandua War Games. Uh, you pop the acrylic out of a sprue, and it just leaves these little cubes um, as as waste material, which I've used for Shinobu's base. Also, like the uh, the crate at the left hand side here, which comes with the Hayfestus box set. Very nice. Next image again. Um, yeah, you can see that he's poking his head around the left-hand side of the objective room building there, if you look carefully at the left-hand side of the photo, and shooting at this uh, this fusilier. And I believe he managed to kill them. can't quite remember the specifics of the game. Next image again, we've got uh, Shinobu uh, moving carefully around the side of um, the building here, and shooting her combi rifle at the, uh, the doctor at the bottom left of the photo, is hanging out in the building there, so successfully killing him and then moving towards the building a bit further. Next image, uh, Domoru, Domaru Butai, just moving further, further forward, getting into better position. Um, there is a mysterious Tio Kemmer marker on the building in the center, but it is prone, so no uh, attempts to willpower on that one. And Sunse, as you can see here, just moving into a better position so he can gain line of sight to the flanks, just in case somebody uh, airdrops. All right, next up, uh, Shinobu Kitsune, changing into a Tio Kemmer marker. 
just hanging out in the corner there, so that's fine. And the Quangxi is actually dogged, it's taken a wound here, which is represented by that red marker, blood token, I should say. Next photo, we've got a Swiss Guard uh, with Heavy Missile Launcher appearing at the uh, start of my opponent's turn and firing a rocket directly at my TR bot. Now, of course, the TR bot is at long range, um, modified by cover, but then it's up against TO Camo and Surprise Shot, so easily failed the face-to-face -face roll there and got destroyed by the Swiss Guard with the, the Missile Launcher there immediately. Next image. We've got a uh, Akali Commando, again my model, lo loaned to my opponent, uh, dropping down here, or coming onto the side of the table, quite close to the Guilang uh, Fort Observer, and of course being able to kill him because uh, shooting him in the back quite easily, even though the Guilang is in um, suppression fire, so quite effective move there. And the next image, we've got the Aquila Guard moving further forward, and I've made a huge blunder in this game. I left Shinobu Kutsune in a point where he could actually uh, come around and draw a line of sight to me, discovering me automatically and killing me, so that was not much fun. Next image, you can see here that uh, the Aquila Guard also moving around to pick around to get line of sight to my camera marker, which he can easily reveal and shoot. So, uh, as the next image will show, it is a, a secondary Guilang, this time with the sniper rifle, but up against MSV3 and an HMG Blissical 15, just no chance, he just kills me immediately, so that was painful. Yeah, a bit of a blunder there, uh, not really preparing for that, uh, that Aquila. Another image just shows uh, what's happening here, so uh, that little black um, silhouette you can see faintly in the distance of the photo, uh, next to that blue and orange building is the Aquila Guard stepping around the corner, but it's Shinobu Kutsune who is getting shot here uh, very effectively, no chance to really uh, avoid this one, just attempting a dodge, but unsuccessfully. Going to the next image, uh, you can see a bit of an overview here. I've placed a white token onto the uh, objective at the right-hand side because I've controlled that. Center objective and far left objective are, are not controlled by Yu Ching or um, Pan Oshana at this stage. And he's got uh, a few TO Kimmer markers floating around the, the battlefield. Um, at this point, spending a command token here, my opponent is putting down several models into suppression fire, including the Aquila Guard. Next image here, we've got a Quangxi moving around the corner, uh, firing off his chain rifle and then getting shot by the suppression fire Akali, but unfortunately not managing to kill him. I think losing the, uh, the Quangxi in the process, unfortunately, and uh, Akali survives, sadly. Next image, okay, here's where I have to come up with a plan. So as you can see, bottom left side of the table is the Celestial Guard with light smoke grenade launcher. He, uh, as you can see with the white arrow, launches a smoke grenade successfully uh, next to the building, blocking off part of the street. And then there is a Damaru Butai behind the central building here, who is going to try and walk around through to attempt to assault the Aquila Guard. You can see the green arrow shows his direction. So to do that, it takes a couple of orders to get the smoke down successfully. And then the Damaru Butai um, spends one or two orders getting into the smoke. And once he's at the edge of the smoke, does a cautious movement across the street to that uh, secondary building in the middle there, with the blue, uh, the ice storm um, box set uh, building as you can see. To do that he crosses the line of sight of the uh, Swiss Guard with, H uh, with missile launcher but this is a cautious move from the cloud to the side of the building so he successfully avoids that and then gets uh, spends another couple of orders getting to position before assaulting around the corner to the HMG Aquila Guard successfully. So spinning the next, uh, looking at the next photo you can sort of see what it looks like here. Damaru Batai moves up to the building to the uh, to the smoke uh, template there. As you can see, no other line of sight apart from the uh, Swiss Guard HMG, sorry, not HMG, missile launcher, and then he's able to get around. Another photo just shows you me taking a, a picture of him coming around to the side. So at this point, the Domaru uh, is within a point where he can just spend an inch to get around the building and another seven inches to get into close combat. Uh, the the Aquila Guard will be able to use Suppression Fire here, but he's at minus three for uh, the Martial Arts penalty at Martial Arts level three, and the Dumaru is uh, basically face-to-face -face roll with a 20. So we'll go to the next photo, and the Dumaru successfully charges in and wins the face-to-face -face roll and uh, causes a critical hit on the uh, Aquila Guard as it happens, and then just manages to hack him down with an um, electromagnetic weapon and uh, finishes him off in close combat successfully. So really good comeback there from the Dumaru, and that uh, we should manage to kill the Aquila Guard earlier, but unfortunately losing a couple of models to him, so it's a bit of a trade-off at the stage. 
a new photograph will show that my opponent is uh, getting into position with his fusiliers to try and shoot at the Damaru. It takes him a couple of orders here um, to nail him with a couple of wounds, but uh, Damaru is sort of being pushed back, eventually getting shot at and killed, but soaking up a few, fair few orders in the process. The next image uh, shows us we've got a Raiden Saibutai with a missile launcher, terrible photo of him, very blurry, um, shooting at a croc man in the distance. The croc man has basically moved across to uh, fire at the, um, at the Damaru on the other side of the building, but by doing so provokes an arrow from the Celestial Guard and the Raiden Saibutai. So the next image will show you that the croc man here in the center has moved across to shoot at the Damaru who tries to dodge back or even shoots his chain rifle. No, he's, he's changing facing because he's facing the wrong way there. But um, I've circled the two um, models that left the hand side of the photo. We've got a Celestial Guard and a Raiden um, shooting back at him. So the Raiden Cybertai rolls a uh, perfect number, uh, gets the rocket off on the uh, croc man destroying him, and the Celestial Guard manages to dodge away. So uh, quite successful there. I did end up using, losing the Damaru this turn, but at least I killed a croc man. Very nice. Next image will show you a non-blurry photo of the new Raiden. I haven't finished painting him, but I'm really happy about the model. Really, really cool looking model, man. Okay, so we're going to move over to um, some photos taken by my cell phone. This next one here will show... Um, yep, so the Damaru is, is killed at this point. He's got his HVT standing in the middle of the street, so that's what that model represents, just so that you know. Next photo again, uh, we've got a mysterious Tio Kamamaka moving around to uh, have a crack at the Raiden, so appearing here, and we'll go to the next image showing that he is actually a Hexa with a Spitfire, so that manages to kill the Celestial Guard, um, and uh, Sun Tse just camping behind the building, doing nothing all game. Next image, very blurry one, so we'll skip that one. We'll go to uh, my final turn here, where Sun Tzu finally gets into the action. It doesn't matter if he dies, because this is my last turn. He moves around here, fires two nanopulsar shots, the Hexa, wiping him out. And that uh, is fine, because Sun Tzu's armor um, manages to fend off the pistol shot in return, so looking good there. Haven't quite finished painting Sun Tzu either, so bear with me. Another image shows that Sun Tzu actually moves around the corner after actually taking a wound from the Hexa, after I recall that correctly, to try and uh, capture an objective, but the Croc Man hacker appears and immobilizes him. No, the Croc Man isolates him instead, which actually turned out to be the wrong move because immo immobilizing him would have been much better than isolating him, um, because isolating him means that he still gets an ARO. So if we go to the next image, the Swiss Guard in the final turn is coming down from the building and moving across. And we go to the next image after this, comes around and gets into a face-to-face -face roll with a Sun Tzu. So Swiss Guard gets out his light shotgun, uh, Sun Tzu has his own heavy shotgun, or boarding shotgun, and they have a bit of a shootout, and Sun Tzu actually doesn't die. Um, if we go to the last photo here, he basically just uh, pulls back behind the building after failing a guts check, and he's got no wound incapacitation. So coming back to what we said earlier, guys, about the custom mission, um, this is a playtest. So we worked it out. I had about 96 points left. I was really smashed by the pano shooting. Um, my opponent had about 120, 130 points left after losing quite a lot of stuff. But I had one objective to his zero objective, so I get another 75 points on top of that. So I won by a margin of maybe... 20 or 30 points, which is a close game, and it felt like a close game. Could have gone either way. If I'd lost Sun Tzu there, I definitely would have lost the game. Um, at an earlier point, he had attempted to control an objective with a Hexa, but not not a specialist, so um, minus three, he needed nine or less and failed it, so that didn't eventuate. If I'd, um, you know, if I'd managed to win the uh, infiltration with Shinobu and pass that, I probably could have killed the Aquila Guard really early, so that would have been really cool. Um, but I'm really enjoying the idea of playtesting a mission which is similar to ITS, but a bit um, fairer for the internal balance of army lists in and, and general and making, making for a bit, a bit more of a, a varied and uh, rewarding game. So, interested in uh, community feedback on, on what we come up with later, but we're still working on it. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed this game, and don't forget to click on the Flamestrike link in the video description, and rate and commend. Thank you.